Hello Muscatine and welcome to Muscatine in Focus. Today we have a really special kind of a teaser on at Muscatine Community College. To my left I have Naomi and to my right I have Jeremy and we are going to do a quick tour on some updates happening here in Muscatine, Iowa. Let's go. So we've entered our Career Advancement Center, a $10 million project that was a part of the $40 million bond that voters approved uh, in March of 2021. And we're so excited to share our progress with you today to give you a sneak preview of some of the hands-on, high-tech programs that are going to be right here in our Muscatine community. We're really excited about this uh, couple of new spaces we have here. The one we're in currently is going to serve as our auto tech training area. And so what you can see behind us is we have a number of training stations. So if you see the workstation back there, it looks like a workbench. Uh, that'll be a space where it'll actually control the lifts. Uh, we'll have a, a portable, movable um, work toolbox that they'll be able to pull out of that space and drag over to the car and they'll be able to use that uh, there as well. And then we did put a number of in-ground lifts in, so you'd be able to kind of really see through the space uh, and have a look at what's going on while you're working. Uh, we also have uh, tire alignment racks. We're gonna have a tire changing station, brake lays, just a number of things like that, like a normal shop would. Uh, this space is gonna be heated and cooled, have a large number of windows around, so you'd be able to see in, have a lot of natural light. And then we even have some things up in the ceiling too. Uh, it's where you'd be able to take that, pull it down, put it on the tailpipe of a car and it is actually the fume extract uh, for when the car is running while it's in the space. Crazy excited about this, and this is gonna be top of the top of the line auto tech training space. Probably one of the best in the state, if not the Midwest. I think one of the things we did at the beginning as we began planning is involve some of our local experts. So I remember distinctly sitting down at Krieger's uh, with John Krieger, Joey Krieger. They pulled in uh, one of their master technicians to really talk into this space and what we should be thinking about in the future. And we made some adjustments right away uh, after that conversation. Uh, and especially Marv Krieger was also involved telling us, you know, what, what to really look for and what to plan on. And one of them, it really was those lifts. And so we talked about getting kind of a, a lower weight lift that would be able to hold the cars. And they talked us into getting something that would hold a little bit more weight because the electric cars weigh significantly more than a regular fuel car does. And we don't know what it's gonna look like in the next five to 10 years related to electric cars, but we wanna have the capability of being able to handle that when the time came when we have maybe a primary vehicle fleet out there in our communities. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And I know that you guys mentioned earlier that about some possible signage up there too. Yeah. That, that's gonna be cool. We put some space up there where uh, if you wanna hang like a Ford or Chevy or Toyota or any, any type of sign, you have the ability to do that. One of our strong area partners as well was Napa. Uh, Napa came through and really discounted a number of tools for us and were able to give us uh, really great deals on the tools that the students will be using. And so the first sign that'll go up there, uh, kind of up behind me uh, above the toolboxes will be uh, a Napa sign because they are one of our corporate sponsors and they're gonna be able to donate that. So if you know of anyone who wants to donate one of those signs, you let me know and I'd be happy to hang <laughs> it behind me. Well, should we head into the next space? So where are we at now? Yeah, the space that you're in right now is our uh, HVAC training area. And funny, this place is under construction, so the lights all just went off during the filming <laughs> of this. So hopefully you can see us well enough and, until the electricity kicks back on. But in here, we're gonna have a really nice space to be able to train folks to be technicians uh, related to heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Behind me, what you'll see, uh, just imagine there'll be a large number of residential units that'll actually be plugged in, active, hooked up to gas and electric that students will be able to work on to practice uh, to hone their skills related to being a technician in the HVAC field. Over here to my right, what we'll have is just kind of a work area where they'll be able to bend metal uh, related to ducting and being able to create the correct ducts and uh, systems needed in order to carry the, the heat or the air conditioning or the ventilation to the spaces that are needed within either a residential or commercial property. How many years does it take to get this certificate? Yeah, our current, uh, it's a diploma with Eastern Iowa Community Colleges and it's a one-year program. And so you'll be able to become a certified technician uh, in the HVAC field with a one-year diploma. 
is that one of the programs we actually shortened up over time because we realized to become employable, we really needed to shorten the program to one year versus two years. Yeah, it used to be a two-year program, and what we found out is that many of our folks needed and wanted to exit and could get a job after one year. And so what we did is we trimmed that program down to a one-year diploma, and then you have the ability to get done in a year and go out to industry and make a very nice living as a HVAC technician. So these are two examples of programs we have not had at the Muscatine campus, but are existing at the Scott campus. So we're really able to use some existing internal resources in terms of faculty and such to, to add those programs right here in our community. Yeah, so one of the other spaces we created was an outdoor uh, area where students could maybe hang out, but more importantly, we could have a number of learning opportunities here as well. So we just talked about the HVAC program. If you notice behind me, you're gonna see five uh, shutoff switches here, and that allows us to bring out more of those commercial outdoor units. We can pick them up with a fork truck, drive them around on the sidewalk, drop them off here, and actually hook them up and plug them in, and we can run a unit. Uh, on exterior, large, industrial uh, type of equipment in the HVAC program. And then we can do a number of things in here as well. So construction or trades, maybe they want to build something in this space. Uh, healthcare and nursing, we might be able to start our simulation, like mock up uh, a heart attack or maybe a car wreck in the parking lot, and then we'll be able to take our simulators all the way into the building, into our hospital rooms, and then be able to treat that patient. Uh, based on that simulation or criminal justice that's another program we have here as well they may be able to do a number of things out here in this outdoor space so we're really excited about this spot and we're really excited to see how faculty are going and students are going to use it and there's so much value to have an hands-on experience before you i mean even when you get into the classroom also so i think this will be really great and i can't wait to see the inside some more this is yeah. great yeah. And Brad, you've been involved with the housing initiatives in Muscatine, so we feel like we will have a big role in helping to solve some of the housing issues with the students that we will uh, be training, uh, with some of the technology that they'll become familiar with, and then the space too. So we've been uh, looking forward to really playing a more active role there. Jeremy, what do we got back here? Yeah, it's mostly, you know, many projects have to have a detention pond to handle some of the rainwater in Muscatine as part of code. But one of the things that we're able to do with our turf and landscape program that we currently have at Muscatine Community Colleges, they're gonna plant a number of pollinators, some of the grasses, some of the things that are uh, unique to maybe helping out the butterflies. And so I know we've been working very closely with our pollinators group in town, and they're gonna help us identify what are really great plants to plant in a space like this that are more natural habitat for the species that we have in our area. They'll look nice. They'll look They'll great. Look nice. So what, what space are we walking into right now? Yeah, so we just kind of left the noisy side of our building and that will be more of the trades. So you have auto tech, HVAC, a number of construction trades area. And then the area that we're going to have over here on this side is primarily healthcare, and then we also have a space for criminal justice as well. And so what you see behind us is we have a medical assisting program that is also a one-year diploma program. And the space that they're in now, you know, it's fine and it's adequate and it's serving our needs. But what we'll be putting in back here is actually like a reception desk, so they can actually mock up intaking patients. And so we've all been to the doctor's office where somebody meets us, kind of gets our information. Uh, gets our weight, our height, our blood pressure, checks a number of our vitals and things like that. And that's what will go on right behind us in the two doctor's offices that we'll have. So they'll be just like a regular doctor's office after they use this beautiful reception desk and take them back in to practice uh, that, that skill that they'll need in order to be able to become a medical assistant. So we're in a classroom, it looks like, or a large classroom. What's gonna happen in here? Yeah, we're really excited about this space. So we currently offer CNA on our campus. Uh, and right now what they're doing, they're kind of in the basement of one of our uh, older buildings. And so what we have the ability to do now is really give them the space that they probably deserve for a number of years. And so the room you're in is our CNA training room. Uh, most of you may know, but the state of Iowa allows only 10 students in each one of those classes. And so we've designed this space for the 10 students who'll be sitting in a CNA class in order to earn that certification. Behind me, what you see is a lot of holes in the wall, and people are always wondering, like, geez, how many outlets can you put in one area? But this is really the headboard or the head wall of a hospital bed. 
So imagine that they have an outlet, they have oxygen, they have ventilation, they'd have a call, a button they would push. And then right here in front is actually where a hospital bed would be with a simulator on it. And so if you look around the room, you would see that there's five of these head walls. There'll be five hospital beds with five simulators on there. So we have 10 students in the class, two students to a bed and a simulator, and they'll be able to get their hands-on practice in here, as well as the classroom space will provide an opportunity for the teacher to uh, teach them the theory portion of a CNA class. What, what's that big hole right there? Yeah, just that, curious. Everyone always asks what that is. Uh, it's a hole that I wish I had in my house because that hole is actually going to be a spot where about a 70 or 80 inch flat screen television hangs in order to be able to do the teaching and learning here. A lot of places we're using projectors, but when you're talking about medical things and cells and things that we need to have very high crisp resolution to, that's something that we really found to be really important for us is to have a high end. Uh, high definition of 80, 70 to 80 inch televisions in these spaces. And then you can imagine there's a dry erase board on either side of that with the 10 students sitting out here learning the theory part of CNA. So here we're in one of these rooms that we've specifically designed for students. There'll be four rooms of the same size, but each one will actually have a different look and feel and utility. So this one might be a room with a sofa and a, and a table. Another one might be more of a conference style. So we really want to give students options every day about what they're wanting to accomplish, who they want to work with, what kind of setting they want. So you'll see again this blue box here. That's gonna be uh, the site for the large screen um, monitor all the electrical, if you want to plug in your computer, your laptop, your phone. And we know that um, just from past experience, nursing students and all allied health students typically form study groups. You probably did that yeah, when you yeah. were in chiropractic school. And so they need those spaces where they're here for hours and hours, uh, quizzing each other, reviewing materials. And so it really has to be comforting and um, well used, uh, usable by them. So where are we at right now? This looks like a new room. Yeah, this is a great space that we're really excited for. So one of the new things that we brought down here to the Muscatine campus uh, is criminal justice. And we have a newer program that's come online. It's something that we've been asking for for our community as well as the students that uh, we serve is to have a better space for that. So one of the great things we're excited about is just the, one, this large area and the large space to be able to do a number of things. So when you're doing like crime scene investigation, you can spread out a little bit more. When you're trying to do some of the more tactical things uh, that police officers do, you have the space to be able to do that. One of the things that we're really excited about is along this back wall here, we're planning on putting in a decision-making uh, training simulator. And that's where you would actually interact with someone and you use uh, really mock weapons, uh, mock tasers, mocks, things like that to try to determine uh, when to pull the trigger and when to not, when to communicate, uh, when to use force, when to not use force. And I'll tell you, they are really lifelike and it is quite amazing. And it gave me quite the appreciation for what police officers do every day and the decisions they have to make in the moment. I do know that we're on the fence, though, about having a tasing unit, I don't know, could I give them your name? As Absolutely. A, someone that they can yeah, yeah, use yeah. as part of the, the tasing unit? Yeah, they can, they can aim in my mid-back. Okay. You know, they probably feel pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things we've done uh, just with the Muscatine Police Department is to have a police academy for uh, high school students, I think 10th and 11th, maybe 11th and 12th graders. We've done that twice now. We've had just this last summer about 25 students participate. So what we're really trying to do is cre uh, increase the pipeline for students into these hands-on programs, especially in the community. We know there's a huge need uh, for anyone involved with law enforcement, even just locally. So we're really happy to play a role in that. Yeah, and on the city side, obviously, we're looking for uh, some police officers right, to join right. the team yep. for sure. So this is a great, great addition to the community. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Yep. So it looks like we're in a nice big room, but with multiple rooms. So what, what are we doing in here? 
Yeah, this is probably one of our favorite rooms in this entire building. A lot of neat stuff already, but this one is probably kind of the icing on the cake, if you will. This is going to be our high fidelity healthcare simulation room. And what we really have here are uh, four hospital rooms with a control room between each one. So at this end, we have a hospital room. At the far end, we have another hospital room with a control room in the middle. And so if you follow me in, I can kind of show you what these uh, look like here. So each one of these rooms, uh, it'll be just like a hospital room. So imagine glass doors here that open up and bring you into the room. There'll be a sink on the one side. And then you may notice and you might see that same head wall that we talked about before in that other room. So this would be the spot where they have a head wall for a hospital bed. Hospital bed would here be here. We have a high-end simulator uh, in this space. We will have four simulators uh, in this entire area. We're going to have a pediatrics simulation, uh, a birthing simulator, an adult male and adult female simulator. So talking about the control room, so what, so is it gonna be like a little Bluetooth type of thing that they're? Yeah, the simulators that we have are what they call not tethered. So they don't need to be plugged in and they don't need to be wired to anything. So they are uh, really wireless and they do run off of battery power. So what'll end up happening is the faculty member will sit uh, back here in the control room. This will be something that the student wouldn't be able to see in, but the faculty member would be able to see out. And then what the faculty member will do is they'll set the controls or they'll set the faults for the simulator to be able to respond in a very uh, appropriate way for whatever it is that they're trying to do. Maybe they increase the heart rate or they're gonna increase breathing or maybe reduce breathing or maybe the heart rate falls. And so then the student will have to be able to make a determination on what needs to be done in the moment while they are setting those faults or making the simulator do uh, something for them. Wow. And just talking about the simulators, I want to give a great thank, thank you to the Roy J. Carver Charitable Trust. Uh, they've been good friends to the college and they helped us purchase these high fidelity, high end simulators that are really going to be transformative, I think, in the students learning. Mm -hmm. And what is happening is a, a portion of your nursing training can be done via simulation anymore. And so obviously that doesn't replace what goes on in the clinical sites. We'll never give that up. We'll always go out into clinical sites and do that. But this allows us to do a number of different things uh, on site. And I'll use an example. So let's say I'm part of the, uh, uh, the birthing process here and I need to go out and I need to be part of, of one of those for my training. Well, what are the chances, one, that you're there during a complication and you're able to watch a complication? Now the simulation can actually run all those complications. So instead of hoping that you catch something that you want to see, the simulator can actually make that happen. And you can do it over and over and over and over again. And so it is quite amazing to see these simulators and how actual real they are. It is quite impressive what technology has done. I think you also mentioned recently that, that um, those exercises can be recorded for students and faculty to review immediately afterwards. So that repetition, but also the review, the discussion, I think provides a level of confidence uh, that you know, students will really appreciate once they're in the real world. Yeah. Very nice. Hey, thank you guys so much for letting us uh, come through and tour this. Is there anything else you'd like to share to the audience? Well, I hope you can see how excited we are and that you share in this excitement of this new facility, this new resource open to the community. We hope you'll join us for our open house and an official ribbon cutting that we'll do with the chamber. It'll be in January at the start of our semester, so stay tuned for information on that. But I hope you'll, you'll come and join us and celebrate this great asset to our community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we'll head on out, I guess.